A very good morning to each and every one of you. Today, we are going to talk about the topic endodontic mishaps. Now, when we talk about endodontic mishaps, it is something that we can encounter during our day-to-day -day endo practice. It could be any type. It could be access cavity related, or it could be during our biomechanical preparation, or it could be post obturation or miscellaneous. So let us talk today about this topic, endodontic mishaps, and how it can be prevented. And once it is prevented, we know that in future, we should always avoid it because always our experience tells us what we need to do and how we need to do things better. Mishaps can be access related, that is treating the wrong tooth, miscanals, incomplete caries removal, damage to existing restoration, access cavity perforations, crown fractures. It could be instrument related, that is ledge formation, cervical canal perforations, mid root perforations, apical perforations, separated instruments and foreign objects, canal blockade, obturation related, that is post obturation over or under extended root canal filling, nerve paresthesia, vertical root fracture, miscellaneous such as post-space perforations, irrigated, irrigant the related mishaps, tissue emphysema, instrument aspiration, and ingestion. Coming to access-related mishaps, treatment of the wrong tooth. Now, this can be easily prevented. How? By taking proper history, inquiry, that is your subjective and objective symptoms have to be well obtained by the dentist from the patient, testing, examining, radiographs. Once the tooth is decided on, we need to make sure that we treat the right tooth. You can either mark it with a felt pen before applying the rubber dam, or you can apply the rubber dam when you're sure which tooth you are going to treat. Missed orifices in canals. Additional canals in the mesial root of maxillary molars, distal root of mandibular molars are frequently missed. Now, we need to know the proper anatomy. We need to know the dental map. We need to know where the canals lie. It is very important. Once we know that, we would be able to find out canals and accessory or excess canals if required. Second canals are lower incisors, second canals, bifurcated canals, and premolars, third molars, upper premolars are also often missed. Adequate occlusal access so that we have straight line access, we can see it is very important. Always expect an extra canal. That is, when we take a mandibular first molar, for example, the distal root, it could have a round or over large canal. It could have two separate canals. The mesial root could have two separate canals with a mid mesial canal in between. Anything is possible. Use magnification loops and dental operating microscope aid in helping us find these accessory canals. Incomplete caries removal. Proper magnification is required to remove caries. We need to remove old restoration. All the restoration is removed. We would know if there are secondary caries undermining the restoration. This prevents leakage and further damage. Damage to existing restoration, especially if the adjacent tooth has a porcelain crown, it is, there is a tendency for it to chip if we are not careful while doing tooth preparation for the adjacent tooth. You need to use a water coolant, smooth diamond point. Do not force the stone in any way. Now, even while placing a rubber dam clamp, make sure that uh, when placed on the gingiva porcelain, uh, it is face down. When you make an access through a porcelain fused to metal crown or through a porcelain crown, make sure that you do it with care because we're doing it so that we can keep the crown in place after the root canal treatment access cavity perforations. Now, the first sign is the sign of blood and the patient might also feel pain. Sometimes the patient might say that they taste sodium hypochloride in the mouth. The site and floor of these perforations is basically because we try to look for the fourth canal or third canal or accessory or extra canals. Now, once the bleeding is controlled, we can place mineral trioxide aggregate on the place of the perforation. Prevention of blockade of other orifices is very important by either placing instruments or paper points in the orifice. MTA cannot be immediately applied, especially if there is fresh bleeding. You can apply calcium hydroxide. And once uh, the bleeding is stopped, calcium hydroxide temporary filling is given. MTA can be also given in the next appointment. Crown fractures, 
securing an appointment in between two appointments is sometimes possible and we can prevent it by relieving the occlusion to seclude the tooth and once the fracture extends through the pulp canal or and the canals goes through is in a vertical direction sometimes it is very difficult to save the tooth you might have to extract it instrument related mishaps ledge formation inadequate access when you do not retain complete control in the direction especially the tip of the instrument and uh, newer instruments prevent this ledge formation they're non-cutting tips uh, they reduce this problem they just slip along the root canal now once uh, the slip is done and we reach the apex working length is established. Make sure that you recapitulate and prevent formation of ledge. Sometimes in curved canals, this predicament of ledge formation is there. How to avoid it? Pre-curve instruments, okay? Once we assess it or access uh, a radiograph, we see the radiograph, there is a curvature. We make sure that we pre-curve. We can use flexible non-cutting tips that negotiate through the curve. This prevents ledge formation. Now, once it is formed, how can we correct it? Now, we can always use a smaller size stainless steel file, curve it at the tip and make it cling along the inner wall away from the curvature. Slip the file by the curve, the full length, and then file back from the ledge. And you use the next size. Once we are bypass the ledge, we can use the next size instrument. Again, file it. Make sure that you recapitulate. Use enough lubrication and irrigation. Now, EDTA or too much of using EDTA can intensify ledge formation, so you should avoid it or avoid too much of EDTA. Again, pre-curved instrument and nickel titanium instruments obviate or prevent these problems. If you can see in this picture, once the curve is deciphered, if the instrument goes along the curvature, we can prevent a ledge. But once it goes and sticks at the curvature, this is because maybe we use non-flexible instruments or don't pre-curve it, we can cause perforation if we try and force the instrument. Now coming to perforations. Perforations, floor of the root canal, because we're trying to look for a accessory canal, we're trying to remove caries, can happen. They can also be happening at the cervical, midroot or apical level. Now, how can we, uh, do we cause these errors, creating a ledge? This causes perforation when we try to force the instrument through, wearing a hole in the lateral surface of the midroot by over instru uh, instrumenting, that's also known as canal stripping, and using long instruments, that is uh, not uh, estimating the working length and trying to use an instrument can cause a pipe with perforation. Cervical perforations usually occur with too large an instrument, even with gates, clear and piezo drill, which are not flexible. Midroot perforations or zipping can also be pre prevented using flexible instruments, instruments which go along the curvature of the canal. And apical zipping can also be prevented. As I said, we need to establish the working length and stick to it. Apical perforation destroys the resistance form and uh, the tip of the gutta percha that is used to later obturate. We should make sure that it stays within the canal, one mm short of the radiographic apex. Sometimes you can even place a tiny amount of mineral trioxide aggregate at the apex if too much of zipping occurs and you're not able to make the gutta percha stay in the canal. Separated and foreign objects. They could be anything from amalgam fires, reamers, lentinospirals, gates, clidentrals, pizos, etc. Or objects by the patient, nails, pencil, toothpicks, tomato seeds, etc. can all occur in the canal. Now, uh, iatrogenic or the doctor related, how can we prevent it? We need to know that broken instrument or an instrument fracture can be prevented. How? We especially use twisting or rotary or rotatory motion. Very careful with the motion of our files. Now, pecking motion, watch winding motion, less forceful, especially when you advance into narrow canals. Now, an instrument before you place it to do a canal or before you use it, is important to inspect it in case there is loss of any of the um, the spirals or uh, unwinding of the spirals. In that case, the fruits are unwinding. We need to discard the instrument. Now, once an instrument breakage happens, it can be removed. 
Now, how can we remove it? We can use the steel gates forceps, which is also used to remove silver cones. We can modify a gate screen that is cut it at the, through the flame shape through the middle. Okay, make a staging platform, use ultrasonics, which help the instrument to float out of the canal. Then, of course, instrument can be even bypassed by using smaller instruments and going beyond the broken instrument. And many instrument re uh, re uh, retrieval kits, such as IRS, instrument re retrieval kit, master run kit, etc. Uh, now, if the broken instrument goes beyond uh, apex into the medullary bone, it has to be surgically removed and a retrofilling placed. And uh, gutta percha, in case of retreatment, can be removed by using solvents or can be also removed by using retreatment files. Canal blockade, we've already talked about ledge formation. No? Debris can also block the canal. This can be prevented by, of course, copious irrigation and recapitulation with the instrument that is used to establish the working length. EDT as a chelating agent is very useful and helpful in preventing formation of a canal block. Dental chimps, of course, stimulate cementum at the apex, but can also cause blockage. So it can be prevented by copious irrigation, one, decapitulation, two. Obturation-related mishaps, that is, could be post-obturation. Remember, to always stay at or within the canal, that is in the radiographic apex. Too short can later lead to problems because we haven't cleaned the full canal to beyond that is beyond the root canal can cause pain okay can cause paresthesia now slight extrusion of the root canal filling material which is also known as a puff or a button okay it can not cause much problem sometimes it heals over time disappears over time but sometimes when the sealer and the root canal filling material that is gp goes much beyond the apex in a mandibular for example if it goes into the mandibular canal this is what happens if you see the picture Overextension, healing is hindered. A sinus tract can be formed because of this. And uh, once it goes in the mandibular canal, the space and massive deposits of this can cause uh, or be a neurotoxic agent, okay? Can cause nerve paresthesia. So when there are these massive overfills, it is advocated to go in for root canal or uh, microsurgery, endodontic microsurgery. And then of course, the retrofilling is essential at that place. Retrofilling materials such as biodentine, uh, MTA, etc., can be used. Vertical root fractures, it can occur anytime before treatment, during treatment, even after treatment. So, after treatment, it could be, of course, due to undo stresses that occur on the tooth. Why? When we do lateral compaction, uh, when we actually um, keep higher occlusion, etc., this can cause fracture. It's also known as silent fractures can happen months or even a few years later due to buildup of additional stress. So it is very important when we even prepare the canal that the remaining dentine thickness is uh, seen and registered. You shouldn't thin out the dentine too much. This causes or can cause weakening of the tooth and fracture. Now, even while placing a post, we should make sure that the post size, how we place the post, how we make the post space, all is important because that could also lead to undue stress and fracture. So no treatment of fracture uh, if the fracture extends beyond the root, goes beyond, is vertical, there's no alternative but extraction. So as much as we can as a dentist, as an endodontist, we need to prevent it. Now coming to miscellaneous mishaps irrigant related ones, especially sodium hypochloride related mishap. If sodium hypochloride goes into the soft tissue, that is periradicular tissue, especially if you force it down, it can be disastrous. It can cause severe pain. It could be violent and alarming, the swelling that occurs. How do you uh, go about it? You need to give antihistamines, ice bath, intramuscular steroids, hospitalization, even surgery is must. It can cause paresthesia, scarring, muscle weakness, which can follow after the sodium hypochloride accident. Prevention is the only solution. You should prevent it. How? By uh, placing a needle passively. You should not wedge it into the canal. You can use blunt side vented needles, example, prudence needle. Uh, needle should always be kept passively, one of them short of the apex. Never force the irrigant beyond. Okay. And of course, the Plunger should also not be forced. 
and the in case a patient has allergy to household bleach, sodium hypochlorite should not be used at all as an irrigant. And instead, you can use others like chlorhexidine, biopure MTAD, etc. Now, tissue emphysema. A blast of air for drying the canal, that is <laughs> during the final procedures, can cause a lot of problem. Especially once an emphysema is formed, an erythema crepitus, okay, uh, a pocket of air which can go along and go to the neck area, cause swelling of the neck, okay, and the patient has difficulty breathing. Even the mediastinum, there's a crunching noise, death can follow. So it needs to be prevented how we dry the canal using paper points. Air is never blown into the canal. It's always blown over the canal. It's known as virtu a virtuary effect. That is over the canal opening, blowing of air. When we use a handpiece, we should use hand pieces which don't uh, give the spent air into the orifice, but through the back of the operating field. That means operating field doesn't get, get the air, spent air directly. Instrument aspiration and ingestion. Use the rubber dam. Also, if you've seen, most of the hand instruments most of the rotary instruments, they have a small hole in the handle through which you can place a dental floss. Always helps to pull the file outside. Even clamps should be flossed or clamps should be tied with floss. Aspiration could happen. It is a medical emergency. Patient should be taken at once to the examining room, x-ray taken if needed, and uh, the aspiration whatever it is that if it is a foreign body if it is a, a file it should be seen where it is it should cause prob it can cause problem if it needs to be surgically removed it needs to be surgically removed you need to consult an expert now coming to the conclusion of this topic of endodontic mishaps it can be avoided of course if the operator or the endodontist takes proper care and precaution during the various procedures that he or she is doing but sometimes some mishaps are completely unavoidable. It is beyond us. It is something that we cannot prevent at all. In such case, we need to reassure the patient. And as an endodontist, we work on how to undo the complication if needed, a referral or an expert consult to be taken. As best we can, we need to make sure that whatever procedure we do doesn't harm the patient in any way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to this Today we come to the end of the session on endodontic mishaps. Hopefully it was useful for you. And uh, in case a question or anything related to this, you'll be able to answer well. Thank you once again.